Hi everybody, it's Jen with OpenSource.com bringing you the top five articles this week, October 13th through the 17th. Every week I look at the page views, look at the buzz, and see which articles are really doing well with readers. So let's kick it off. At number five we have Government Evangelist at GitHub on U.S. Open Technologies. This is an article written by Melanie Chernoff, Public Policy Manager for Red Hat and an OpenSource.com advisor. She interviews Ben Balter, a government evangelist at GitHub. So what does that title mean exactly? Well, Melanie says it best. He leads the efforts to encourage adoption of open source philosophies, making all levels of government better, one repository at a time. I was interested in Ben's work in this interview because I wondered why a code repository platform like GitHub needs a government guy. The answer is around government agencies who need GitHub or who use GitHub and that more and more of them are, which is great. How cool. But to get the full scoop on Ben's work, check out this interview. He'll also be talking about software development as a civic service at the All Things Open conference in Raleigh this year, which is upcoming next week, October 22nd and the 23rd. All right, number four, what's in a name in open source? Martin Mikos writes his third and final in a series on open source business models. The series was more or less a transcript of a talk he recently gave, and we have a link to it in the article and in the notes below. As the head of the cloud, of cloud business at Hewlett Packard and CEO of Eucalyptus before that, I thought Martin had some interesting experience and knowledge to share about what it means to be an open source business and the trade-offs you have to make to make that business viable and successful. This is a good read for anybody who wants to know more about how a business runs on open source. At number three, we have where new European Commission leaders stand on open source. Paul Brownell reflects on the upcoming departure of European Commission Vice President for the Di Digital Agenda, Neely Kroos. Farewell, Neely. Reminding us of her advocacy for open standards and open source software. She's really done an amazing job in, her, um, in the industry, in her space, um, on policy and open standards. Uh, so if you don't know much about her, I would definitely Google her and um, check out some of the great work she's done. I'm sure she's going to find another wonderful spot to um, work in, and we're sad to see her go, but that's how it works, and hopefully we'll have some great new people come in her place. And uh, Paul says that it's too early to tell, but in the meantime, we should take a look at the track record of the two people recently named to take the lead on ICT for the new commission, and you can find more about that in Paul's article. All right, at number two, we have five open source alternatives to popular web apps. Scott Nesbitt takes us away again on another ride through his top open source alternatives for Sol for X. This time, it's popular web apps, and aren't we glad? We know you have a need for speed, and this article's got just that on how to get and use these open source apps. Maybe you'll be tossing out Instagram and Jockbox just as fast. They are Instagram for Instagram, Walla Bag for Pocket, Fresh RSS for Google Reader, Own Cloud for Dropbox, and Charlie for Delicious. Find those links in the notes. Finally, at number one this week, we have new open hardware, Raspberry Pi B+. Luis Ibanez, a writer and community moderator for OpenSource.com, ordered the fairly new Raspberry Pi B Plus board from Adafruit and sent us his review. He takes note of the differences between the Model B and the new Model B Plus, while reminding us that what hasn't changed is the price and the amount of RAM. That's awesome. Uh, these boards are only $35, and they have 512 megabytes, respectively. Luis goes further and instructs readers on how to set it up, which he says is still base, pretty basic and straightforward, though there are some adjustments he recommends, and he recommends using the Raspbian Wheezy Linux distribution. So um, see those full notes on how to do that in the article. Um, all, these articles are all published. They're all in the notes below this video, 
And this article that I am um, reading from and talking to you about now is published every Sunday. And we'll be here again next Friday, so join us then. Thanks so much. See ya.